L -l Listen to me, this your conscience, you ain't lying to me Think the one got you on your feet and got you on your ground Think, think the one that keep the holy scriptures on your mind Think, think it's telling you that you was running out of time Who was, was there for you when you was feeling so low? Who was there for you when everyone left you alone? Tell me who put you on top want to welcome you to another class um, brought to you by Israelite Schools of Kings and Priests. I'm Brother Or Ebre. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. And we're going to bring you this class today. We're going to be reading from the book of Jonah. And the title of the class is Obeying um, the Word of Yah when He brings it or when He sends it to you. <clears throat> so first we're going to open up with Matthew 26 and 6, read here by the volunteer Scott. So bring us in, Scott. Tell me where you at. Matthew 26, verse 6. Now on Hamashiach. Now when Hamashiach was in Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leaper there came unto him, a woman having a alabaster, alabaster box of very precious ointment. ointment, and poured it on his head. As she sat at me. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, indignation saying, to what purpose is the waste? For the ornament, ornament. ornament might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Hamashiach understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye, ye the woman for she hath wrote wow. a good rock, mm -hmm. a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but, but me mm -hmm. ye have not always. For in the in that she hath poured this ornament ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. burial. Verily I say. Unto you, wheresoever. wheresoever the gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this this that this woman hate done be told for a me memorial for a memorial of her. Oh, praise! Oh, praise! Good praise. job! Good job! All right, let's get it. All right. So we're going to be starting um, reading through reading from the book of Jonah, um, chapters one through three. Um, just getting an understanding of um, when Yah brings us word, being prepared and being strong and willing to do the word. All right, chapter one, verse one. Yes, sir. All right, the book of Jonah, chapter one, verse one. Now when the word, I mean, now when the word of the Most High came unto Jonah, the son of Amai, uh, Am Amanati, saying, Arise, go to N N Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. All right. So right here, um, we have we have Jonah, who um, is an Israelite from the northern tribe. And Yah came to Jonah and gave Jonah an assignment. Yah came to him and gave him specific instructions on what to do. Um, oftentimes in our life, Yah comes to us and speaks to us as well and gives us a, speci a specific assignment to do. Um, so when Yah comes to us, we have to be prepared for that specific assignment because we never know what it is and we never know when it's going to come. All right, verse 2. Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tar Tarshish from the presence of the Most High, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Most High God. So right here, as we're reading, Yah came to Jonah. 
gave Jonah an assignment, gave Jonah a word. But what did Jonah do? Instead of doing what Yah told him to do, Jonah ran and fled the other way. Oftentimes that happens in our life. Yah uses vessels, Yah uses as his vessels to, to um, impact other people's lives. Yah will give us a message to go and tell someone else, but because we are afraid or because we think that that message um, is going to maybe tear that person down or whatnot, instead we run and do the opposite thing of what Yah told us to do. That's right. All right. Verse 6. But the most verse five. I mean, five. verse five. No, 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 no. Actually, verse, verse four, four. My bad. Mm -hmm. It's like you. Verse four. But the Most High sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every one unto his God, and cast forth the what the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So, right here, what we have the narrative is, Yah came to Jonah, gave Jonah an assignment to go and tell the, um, the inhabitants of Nineveh. Told him, hey, as we go back up here in chapter 2, he told him, cry against this great city, for the wickedness is come up before me. So Yah sent Jonah to be the warning to these people that they had they had committed sin against Yah. Instead of going to tell these people that they had committed sin against Yah, Jonah went the other way. So basically, Jonah was afraid. <clears throat> Let me go back to Jonah. So Jonah was given an assignment to go and speak the atrocities that Nineveh had committed against Yah. And instead he ran. This reminds me of a similar situation when we go to the book of Jeremiah. So we go to Jeremiah chapter 1, um, and we're starting at 4. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before there cameth Forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. So, so Yah knows that whenever, when our prophets are born, when he's using you, when Yah is using you, he already had you designed for a specific assignment before he even created you in the physical. So when Yah comes to bring you a message, or when Yah tells you or gives you an assignment, it's because in this realm that we're in, there are multiple moving parts. And if you don't do your job in the multiple moving parts, then you throw off something else. Mm -hmm. So right here, just like with Jonah, y'all came to Jonah and said, I need you to go tell Nineveh, um, crying is Nineveh because they've committed great atrocities. Jonah fled. Keep reading. And Jeremiah. Y'all Je came to Jeremiah as well. Keep reading. All right. Jeremiah chapter 1 and your six, verse 6. six. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Ah, uh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. So, Jonah fled when Yah had came to him and told him to go say something. Yah came to Jeremiah and had him go speak a word. And instead of saying, Okay, Yah, I'm going to go do it, Jeremiah gave an excuse. Jeremiah said, But I'm, I'm just a child, Yah. Keep reading. But... The Most High said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. So Yah was telling him right there, hold on, matter of fact, keep reading, read the next verse. But not afraid, uh, be not afraid of their faces. He said what? Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Most High God. So see, this is what happens. Tying this story back to us. Yah will give us an assignment, but when Yah brings us an assignment, we don't think we're prepared. So in the book of Jonah, Yah gave Jonah a word. Jonah ran scared. Now the story don't say Jonah was scared, but what I know from flight or fight and human nature, you, you have two options. You're either going to fight or you're going to flight. And when you fight, that means that you're prepared for the battle. 
When you fly, when you go into flight mode or you run, that means you're afraid. That's human nature. So we go back to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah came up with an excuse. Y'all told him, hey, I formed you out the bed. I knew you before I formed you out the womb. I had an assignment for you. And Jeremiah said what? I am but a child. Y'all said, be not afraid. When y'all comes and delivers you a message to tell you to do something, you can't be afraid to do that thing. Because if you're afraid to do what you're supposed to be doing that y'all tells you to do, it throws off the whole balance of the world that we live in that y'all has designed. Every piece has every piece has its own mission. And if you don't do your job, then you mess up something else. Let me, so let, me, go, mm -hmm. let, me let me read some uh, another example too, like the example of uh Moses. Same thing, the most high God gave him a mission to do. Uh, in the book of Exodus. Start at uh, verse uh, chapter three, verse one. Now, when Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and led the flock to the banks of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, of God, even to Herod, and the angel of the Most High appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. And when the Most High saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. So right there, it showed you Moses wasn't scared. Mo the Mo and the Most High God seen that. Mm -hmm. And that's when the Most High God called unto him and then gave him that mission. Go ahead. All right. So we're going to go back to the book of Jeremiah, mm -hmm. chapter 1, verse 9. All right, Jeremiah chapter one verse nine. So right now, so, so we're still in Jonah, but we're going we're in Jeremiah as well to show the parallels here. So right now, um, we're in Jonah. Jonah was given a word by Yah to go and tell Nineveh, "Hey, your atrocities have risen up against Yah," and um, to cry out to them to let them know that they have offended Yah. They've sinned against Yah. Jeremiah was given a word. Jer I'm sorry, Jonah ran. And went and went opposite of what y'all told him to do. Jeremiah was given a word to do, and he made excuses to y'all. So right now we're in um at chapter nine. Me, I'm sorry, verse nine. All right. Jeremiah chapter one, verse nine. Then the most high put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the most high said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See right here. That's why Yah told him earlier, be not afraid. Yah gives us missions. And y'all always gives us missions. And the first thing we do when y'all gives us a mission or assignment is we doubt ourselves. Because we don't think that we are prepared for the mission at hand. Now, hold on. Let me read something real quick. I'm going to get in that example. In the book of Ezekiel, it's the same thing. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat, and it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words thou cannot understand. Surely had I sent you to them, they would have hearkened unto me. But the house of Israel would not hearken unto me, I mean would not hearken unto thee, for they would not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-headed. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Right. Keep going. Mm -hmm. You see, you only you, you yeah. finished well with that. I turn the page. All right, I got it. I got it. It's like it. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their face, and thy forehead strong against their forehead. Verse nine: As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not; neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So right here, y'all sent another prophet on an assignment. And had to let them know, hey, no matter what these people say, mm -hmm. be not afraid of them. We're going to go over here in the book of Judges, chapter 6, to the story of Gideon. So y'all came to Gideon to tell him to um, lead the charge of an army. He had an assignment. 
This is what Gideon said to Yah. We're going to start at chapter 6, verse 14. And Yah looked upon him and said, Go into this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So Yah's telling Gideon, I'm the one that sent you. I need you to go do this. So this is what Gideon said to him. Yah gave him a great mission to go and save Israel. This is what Gideon said. And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. This is what our <laughs> issue is. Yah gives us an assignment because y'all already know, like he told Jeremiah, I formed you from the womb. I knew you before I formed you from the womb. Y'all already knew the power that he put in you. All the times we don't have the belief in ourselves to think that we can accomplish the goals that Yah has set forth for us. But like um, Gideon said here, I'm the least, I'm the poorest of my family is poor and I'm the least in my father's house. How can I save the whole nation of Israel? And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Very simple. The power that Yah puts in us is stronger than any power that we have for ourselves. Yah believes in us more than we believe in ourselves. If, if we believed in us as much as Yah believed in us, then we would have the power to overcome any obstacle that is put in front of us. But that's the issue. Our faith is lacking in ourselves, in our abilities. Um, Gideon said right there, not only is my family poor, but I'm the least of my whole family. Y'all said, I told you, you, gonna, you are going to save Israel. Going back to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah had an assignment. What did Jeremiah tell y'all? I am but a child. What did y'all say? Be not afraid because I am with you. Then y'all put forth his hand and touched the mouth of Jeremiah and put his words in his mouth. So now it says here, Jeremiah, uh, what are we at, 10? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So right there, y'all told Jeremiah, no, this is what your purpose is. I have a design for you. I don't care if you're a child. I know what you have the power to do. Just like he told Gideon, I don't care that you're the least of your family's house, the least of your father's house. I gave a great mission for you. So I need you to do it because if you don't do your job, then you throw off the whole schematics of what I have going on in this ring. So we're going to jump over to 17. Verse 17. Yeah, just read the first part of um of 17 up into the code. All right. Jeremiah 1 and 17. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. And, and, and be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. So right there, y'all saying, y'all basically told Jeremiah, yo, grab your manhood. <laughs> That's right. Grab your manhood, quit being soft, and do what I told you to do. That's right. Let them know that this is what I have, this is what's going to happen, and don't be confounded by them. <coughs> See, when we go back to the book of Jonah, back to where we started at, Jonah was afraid. So we back, um, Jonah chapter, where did we stop at? Chapter 5. Yep, we were at five. Verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 5. Yes, sir. All right, chapter, Jonah, chapter 1, verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So right here, Jonah was given an assignment. Jonah did not do the assignment that Yah gave him to do. So guess what happened? Now there came chaos in Jonah's life. Same thing with us. When Yah gives us an assignment to do and we don't do it, we bring chaos in our life. But I want y'all to pay attention to something very important. Jonah's actions brought chaos around. 
Jonah chilling, sleep at the bottom of the boat. Mm -hmm. Everybody else around him is being affected by his chaos, by his disobedience to the word of Yah. That's right. In our life, when we are disobedient to Yah, our disobedience doesn't always just affect us. It affects those around us as well. Scripture tells us as a man, we're supposed to be taking care of our children. If you don't take care of your children as a man, yeah, or you don't, yep, it only doesn't affect you, it affects your children as well. Your children don't have the best upbringing. Other people have to pick up your slack when you're not taking care of your responsibility as a man, as a, even as a mother. If you don't take care of your responsibility with your children, if you don't put them in the best circumstance, if you aren't loving and nurturing, if you as a mother don't love and nurture your children, not overly love and nurture, but if you aren't loving and nurturing to your children, your children grow up, now they become a, a, um, a problem in society. That's right. So now that storm that you created didn't just affect you, it affected everyone around you as well. So now you have brothers, uncles, cousins, grandfathers, fathers, all this and that, all having to suffer through the storm of the child that you didn't love and nurture. Anything in life, if y'all gives you an assignment and you don't do it, it affects not only you, but those around you as well. That's why it's important to be obedient. That's right. Keep reading. All right, uh, verse 6. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so, be that God will think upon us that we perish not. So the um, so the, the ship captain came to Jonah and said, "Hey, look, we didn't all call upon our gods, and this is not this, this not this storm is not ceasing. This your fault. We need you to call upon your God and and and, and help and help us get past this." All right, verse seven, and they said. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So now, before they even cast the lots, all of them contacted, they made contact with their deity that they served. The storm did not stop. The only one that was left was Jonah. So when they go to cast these lots, it's going to tell them exactly what they already knew. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. Lot fell upon Jonah. Jonah wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. So y'all sent the message through a cast in the lots that, oh no, this situation, this problem, is the problem is caused by jo Jonah's disobedience. Mm -hmm. Can you read it? All right. And so, verse 8. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence cometh thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Most High, because he had told them. So, they're right here. These people knew, man, you were given an assignment by your God, and you didn't follow the assignment. Now, because you were disobedient, now all of us are suffering. They read that right there. This is why it's important to do what you're supposed to do, because the what you not doing what you're supposed to do when you get an assignment from Yah will cause those around you to be fearful. A ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. No matter how big the assignment is, if Yah tells you that you that this is what you're supposed to do, that means he's already prepared you for it, even when you don't think that you're prepared for it. Mm. All right, verse 11. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wroth and was temp temp temperous, temperatus. Verse 12. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. So Jonah took fault for um his Jonah took fault for his part in all of this. He knew that man, I was mm -hmm. being disobedient. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. Let me not allow my actions to no no let me uh, let me not allow the actions that I chose to affect those around me. See, here's how it goes. Jonah in that time became selfless. A lot of us, 
we know that the storm that we cause and is affecting those around us and we still won't remove ourselves. We will rather continue to hurt those around us because we don't want to be obedient than to just be obedient and do what we're supposed to do and stop the hurt, pain and, 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 and trials that everyone else has to go through because of us. Keep going. We got 13. 13. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. For the sea broth and was temperatures. So, so Jonah, those around him, and originally, as you can see, and this happens with a lot of our loved ones. When we're disobedient to y'all, they don't just necessarily give up on us altogether. Sometimes they might try to help the situation. But as we see here, when you go against y'all, mm -hmm. there is nothing that you can do to change the circumstances until you become back obedient to the message that y'all gave you. So as you can see here, they tried to roll, they, but it wasn't happening. You want to know why? Because Jonah was being disobedient. So there was nothing that they could do to get out of that storm. Right. Mm -hmm. 14. For, verse 14. Wherefore they cried unto the Most High and said, We beseech thee, O Lord. We beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. And, let, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. So right here, once those that are around you get you from around them, <laughs> their life comes down. Yeah, sometimes, hey, that's what happens. So when you're being disobedient to Yah. And people don't want your ripple effect, you can't get mad at them. Mm -mm. You can't. Especially when you know what you were supposed to be doing the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. And people don't want to help you because they don't want to feel the backlash of y'all. Because it's almost like, it's like, for instance, aiding and abetting a criminal. Mm -hmm. If you know somebody robbed a bank and you hiding them out, police come get them out your house, guess what you're going to jail to. And that's the same thing that happened here with Jonah. Oh, that's in the apartment for also. We keep going. You want to bring it up? Yeah, keep talking. I'll bring it up. So, so that's why it's important to make sure that you're doing what you're doing. And then also, if you see somebody is not being obedient to the word that they have, you need to make sure that you either, hey, you need to get from around me. Because their actions, you only can help somebody so much. As you can see right here, these people, were, these men were trying to roll. And nothing they could do to get them out of that storm. They had to remove themselves from Jonah in order to get away from the storm. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it. Uh, we're in the Apocrypha. Uh, the, uh, Sirach, chapter 12. We start at verse 1. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest, so shall thou be thanked for thy benefits. Do good to a good godly man, and thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread, and give it not unto him, lest, at least, lest he overmaster thee. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good that thou hast done unto him. So that's letting you know right there. When you have somebody around you that's doing wickedness, you need to get them from around you. Or you're going to suffer double. For trying to help them. For trying to help them. As you can see, right here, going back to what he said, they tried to roll. What, what 13 said? Nevertheless, mm -hmm. the men rode hard to bring it to the land. But they could not. For the sea was rocked with tempters, and it was against them. So they were they were exerting more energy trying to help Jonah mm -hmm. than just throwing him overboard. As mm -hmm. soon as he threw him overboard, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. Oh, you supposed to help your brother out? Mm -hmm. Okay, you bring it up. You see what y'all did? You see what y'all? You saw how? Oh, did y'all reward enough for trying to help Jonah? No, nope. no, because Jonah was going against the will of y'all. Y'all would if you see somebody if you see somebody in need and you try to help them and it ain't working, that means you need to go on ahead, remove yourself because. What y'all doing is way more than the help that you can offer. Or else what you're going to do is befall that same punishment on you because 
you're literally trying to alter the will of Yah. Right. Yeah. That's why when you see somebody doing something, say something, if you help them and they still don't help, go ahead and back up. Or else you're going to befall all of that punishment upon yourself. Mm -hmm. Alright, so what we but, have, let, let me break something else out mm -hmm. real quick about yeah. that. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10, 31. It says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Those people that were on that boat, they had them fell into the hands of that living mm -hmm. God. They were very fearful. Yes. And once that once that living God gets you, ain't nobody going to get you out of his hand once he got you. Yep. Nobody. Jonah could not get from anywhere because nope. he was already in the hand of God. Mm -hmm. They could not help him. They could not save him. That's what happens when you're disobedient. Can nobody get you out of your disobedience except for you? Because you're in the hand. You put yourself there, you have to get yourself out. That's right. So where we're at, verse um, 17? Verse yep. 17. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17. And Mosai had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. See, right here, sometimes Yah has to reset us. So this is what Yah did. Yah said, Jonah, I have a whole system set up. And you not doing your part is going to throw off everything. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and sit you down for three days. Mm. We're going to go ahead and sit you down so that way you can recalibrate yourself and understand the importance of why you need to do what I assigned you to do. I didn't give this assignment to you because I didn't think you could do it. I gave this assignment to you because I put everything in motion and you are a part of the puzzle or you are a part of what I have going on. And if you don't do your part, you throw off. Everything else, and this is what we don't. This is what we fail to realize. In the society that we live in, we have been taught to be very selfish and think about only us, and to think that everything we do only affects us. Jonah was one man. This is this is real important to understand. Jonah was one man. That one man not doing his job literally would have put to death. An entire city of people. Now we know a city is thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. We have to realize that the decisions that we make in our life don't just affect us, but they affect numerous people around us. So when you're not upholding your end of the bargain of being faithful and being obedient to Yah, it's a lot of other people who would affect not just you. If y'all called you into ministry and called you to be, let's say, a minister, and you decide you don't want to do it, you may have had an idea that was supposed to feed thousands of people. But because you didn't do it, now a thousand people starve. Somebody's child starves. Somebody's child dies of hunger. Because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. We are not just responsible for ourselves. We're all responsible for those around us. What's that? The book of Acts? What's that? When they when when all the townspeople put their money together to help the apostles, what is that? All right. So what we have to realize. So, the life that we live is not just for ourselves. The life that we live is to help those around us. So we go to the book of Acts, chapter four, starting at uh, thirty four, and it says, "And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection." of um, the Lord Yahushua and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands of houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that they were sold and laid them down at the apostles feet and the distribution was made unto every man according as his need. So right here it just goes to show you we're all supposed to be helping one another out. We all are. If one of us needs, if one of us lacks, we're supposed to be helping one another out. The life that we live is not just for us. But oftentimes we become selfish. And then we, we allow those things around us, the storms that we're in, not following the will of Yah, to affect those around us. So we're going back to Jonah, chapter 2, starting at 2 and 1. So, um, so we just read Yah prepared a, a fish, or yeah, prepared a fish for Jonah. He got swallowed up. We're going to sit Jonah down for a few days. All right. The book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Most High, his God, out of the fish's belly. Isn't this ironic? 
as soon as we get so we so y'all gives us an assignment, y'all gives us a mission, we don't listen to it, then we have to go through trials and tribulations and then we want to pray to y'all. Instead of just doing what we're supposed to do in the first place. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the most high. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. And thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas. And the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. So right here, Jonah has realized that I didn't listen to, I wasn't obedient to the word of Yah. And because I was not obedient to the word of Yah, I have been cast out of his sight. Mm -hmm. When we're disobedient to the word of Yah, Yah turns his back on us and allows atrocities to happen to us. Some of them not big, some of them big, depending on what it was that Yah had assigned for you. So then he turns his back on us. So then we then have to come back groveling, begging Yah to get his attention back. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. No, verse, four. No, verse 4. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Verse 5. The waters compass me about, even to the soul. The deepest closed, the depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. So right here, right, this is real as we're reading this, this is symbolism. Jonah's letting you know, out, Yah, he was talking to Yah, Yah was disobedient to you. And everything just got extremely chaotic. Everything just started going haywire. You gave me an assignment. I didn't uphold my assignment. And now the waters, even though he's saying the waters can pass them, the waters are symbolism of trouble. That's right. Everything around him got up. Well, he said the waters can pass me about even to the soul. All his troubles began to, began to overwhelm him, even down past his flesh, but to his soul. It started to bother him within on the spiritual level. And the depths closed round about me. The weaves were wrapped around my head. He couldn't think. It was cut. It was cutting off his thought process because everything that he was going through became chaotic. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, and the earth with our bars were about me forever. So even within the earth, no matter where he went, he felt that he was in bondage. No matter where he went, because he disobeyed Yah, he could not get out of the bondage he put himself in by being disobedient. Even earth held him prisoner. Where we at? Um, verse 7. Verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Most High, and my prayer came in unto thee, thine holy temple. They that ob observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But, okay. but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So, right here, this goes back to also following the word of Yah, but when you make a promise to Yah, you have to uphold and keep your promise. Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5. So Jonah said here, what did Jonah say? Read that again for me. All right. Verse 8. I mean verse 9. Hold on, go up to verse 7. Verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Most High, and my prayer came in unto me in thine holy temple. Verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the most high. So Jonah made a vow to y'all. Jonah was chosen. Now at the beginning of the story we don't really have um the details of anything before this, but pretty sure Jonah knew he was chosen already. And he knew y'all, and y'all gave him an assignment. 
And I'm pretty sure he told y'all before this, for him to make this statement, y'all, if you use me, I'll do it. I'll go over and do whatever you want me to do. I'm just going off of this, off of the assertion that's given here. So Jonah had made a previous vow to Yah before, um, before the story started. Because it, it never mentioned in the story that he made a vow, but Jonah said he had made a vow. So we're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5. Um, starting at verse 4. When thou vowest a vow unto God, unto Yah, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou should not vow anything than that thou should vow and not pay. So right here, Jonah made a vow to Yah. And Yah is showing him why it is better to not have made a vow to me at all than to have vowed and went opposite of what I told you to do. So we're going to go back where we at. Um, where you at? Chapter, uh, chapter uh, um, two, 2, verse, verse 10. 9. Okay, verse 10. Mm -hmm. All right. And most I spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. So right here, Yah, it, Jonah said, oh, you know what, Yah, I'm going to keep my vow that I vow to you. And Yah said, okay, well, that's cool. I'm going to let you go then. And this, the giant fish spit him out. So now we're going into chapter 3. So we know Yah gave Jonah an assignment. Jonah did not keep the assignment, but he told Yah he would. So let's read chapter 3. We're going to finish it up at chapter 3. All right, Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. And the word of the Most High came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise. And go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So, right here, y'all came back and said, all right, we're going to try this again. <laughs> so, he said, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time and repeated what happened the first time. Go into the city and preach what I told you to preach to them. What did he tell them um, early in chapter 1? Cry against them, for their wickedness is come up before me. One of, our, one of the commandments Probably. is not the one of our commandments, book of Leviticus, is to not suffer sin upon thy brother. When you see our, thy brother doing something, you are to rebuke thy brother. That's Leviticus, was that 1917? Mm -hmm. So he's supposed to rebuke your brother. So literally, Jonah suffered sin on top of sin. Not only did he disobey the word of Yah by not doing what Yah told him to do, but then he didn't go tell his brothers that they were sinning. When they were in sin. So it double sin. Mm -hmm. Jonah Jonah committed a double sin. Very, very simple. He didn't listen to Yah and he didn't warn his brothers to speak against his brothers when he saw them committing sin. So Yah gave the word, brought him to him again a second time. Let's see if you can do this. Let's see if you can get this right this time. So where are we at chapter three? Verse three? Verse two. No, verse three. Three. Verse three. All right, Jonah chapter three, verse three. So Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Most High God. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So, so Jonah's letting them know, In forty days, your city will be overthrown, because your wickedness has reached to Yah. Just keep reading. Verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed the Most High and proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So so Jonah came, gave them a word, and the people of the city heard the word, and then they immediately began repenting. See, what Jonah had to bring them wasn't about Jonah. It was about them. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, verse 6. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he and he laid his robe from him, and he covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Verse seven, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. So right here. They immediately began to repent to Yah. They immediately began to to afflict themselves. That's Just right. like when we have Yom Kippur, a day, a day of atonement, you're afflicting yourself. Nothing enters into your body. You don't take any any pleasures in. 
It's because you're flipping yourself to, to ask for forgiveness from Yah of all your sins. They said they sat in ashes. They put they 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 took their clothes off, put on sackcloth. Sackcloths are old potato, old potato um bags. Mm -hmm. So they so they took off all of the things that they were comforted in, put on sackcloths, sat in ashes, didn't eat and didn't drink because they were in repentance mode. Mm -hmm. Jonah, this one man, the message that Yah gave this one man helped to put a whole great city into repentance mode. That's how important the message is that little old Jonah had to take to the city. Mm -hmm. You gonna keep reading? Verse eight. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto the Most High God. Yeah, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their heart in their hands. This is why it's so important to be to be obedient to the word of Yah. These people didn't even realize that they were in such bad sin. It wasn't until Jonah came with his word that he that they knew that oh my goodness we have offended Yah. It says it right here. What did you what what did you just read? Right. What were you at? Nine, right? Verse nine, yeah. No, verse eight. Verse eight. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto the Most High God. Let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Obviously, they didn't realize that they that their sin had grown so great because it took Jonah coming to tell them that their sin had been great for them to know. But immediately, they went into repentance mode and they turned away from their evil. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, who can tell if the Most High will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Verse 10, and the Most High saw their works that they turned from their evil way and the Most High repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So, as we finish up here, the importance of following through with an assignment that Yah gave us. Because we don't know how great what it is that Yah tells us to do is going to be. And we don't know who it's going to affect. If Jonah had not done that, let's just say Jonah stayed stubborn. Didn't, didn't turn back. This whole city would have been destroyed. So thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, we don't know right now. All of these people would have all been destroyed had one person, Jonah, not done what he was supposed to do. That's why it is imperative that when Yah gives you an assignment, no matter how great you think it is or how, or how you don't think you qualify, do it. Because the things in which you are assigned to do don't just affect you. It affects as a ripple effect of other people around you. That's right. So if Yah gives you an assignment to move and do something, move and do that thing. The story of Jonah proves how important that is. With the story of Jonah finishing up in chapter 3 also shows that Yah has a will, but by doing the right thing, that will can be altered. Yah told us, right, Yah said right here, because they, their, their sins had, had grown and exceeding and, and they were wicked. They were getting ready to be destroyed. But because they repented, they turned away from their evil ways, Yah turned the wickedness that he was going to send to them. So that goes to show you right there that we have free will. Now, we don't have free will from the consequences of our actions, That's good right. and bad. Consequences aren't just things that are bad. But there is a consequence to every action. Because they were wicked, the consequence was destruction. But because they repented and turned away from their evil ways, the consequence was that the was that the wickedness and the destruction that was coming to them was turned away. The book of Jonah shows right here that you have the ability to do what you need to do to serve Yah. Yes, there is a beginning and an end. And yes, things are quote unquote written out. But right here, if it was already written out for them to be destroyed, no repentance that they could have ever done could have saved them. Mm, that's right. So that goes to show you right there that if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you will be rewarded for your actions, both good and bad. You have anything else you want to bring up? No, just this last prayer we Okay. So um that's the story that we have here. Um that that's the lesson. This concludes the lesson of being obedient to the word of Yah. Um, brother, um, 
Brother Yeshuron is going to close us out with a prayer out of the book of Psalms. Psalms 28. The book of Psalms, um, chapter 28. All right, Psalms chapter 28, verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Most High, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall I be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Most High God. The Most High shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yeah, thou shalt see the children's children and peace upon Israel. That's for those who fear the Most High God. And like uh, the brother was just preaching tonight, fearing the Most High God is doing exactly what he tells us to do. Mm -hmm. That shows us fear. Fear is being, obedience is part of fearing the Most High God. Because like the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, while well, he's pulling seven. that up, and we also want to make a distinction. Um, when we think of fear, we're not talking about being scared. Yeah. When we fear Yah, it's having reverence for Yah. It's a respect. Not a being, Yah doesn't want you to be afraid of him. Yah wants you to respect him. That's right. That's the difference. So when you're having a fear of Yah, you're not scared. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do what he tells me to do because I don't want to be punished. No, you respect what Yah says. So you want to do what Yah tells you to do because you know what he has for you to do is for your benefit in the long run. That's the difference between fear and respect. Respect is you're reacting off of the good. Fear is you're reacting off of the bad or the negative. All right. Uh, Proverbs verse chapter 1, verse 7. Uh, the fear of the Most High God is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And one more, James chapter 1, verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally, and other breatheth not, and it shall be given unto him. So the way that we get knowledge and wisdom is to fear the most high God and be obedient and listen to his ways and follow his directions. With that being said, Kwame Asherala, Kwame Asherala, Shalom, Shalom, Rise Up Israel, Israelite School of Kings and Priests, Kwame Asherala. You'll be glad that you got clean and that you won't be 